from Mirte here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to make this art journal page in my mini art journal from Sakura. Even though the paper is quite thin, I still really like this journal because of its square size. I think it looks cute this tiny. And for a beginner it's also easier to fill the pages when they are smaller. Because I'm going to work with sprays today, I protect the other pages of my journal with a paper towel. So I saw some demos on dilution sprays lately and they really inspired me for making this background. I really love how vibrant the colors are and how they blend into each other when you spray them on your page. Unfortunately, I don't have the dilution sprays, so I'm going to make my own sprays with my Echoline. Echoline is a liquid watercolor and even when it dries, the color stays very vibrant, just like the dilution sprays. Making sprays is really easy. I have these cheap spray bottles I got from AliExpress. And since the Echoline already has a pipette in the lid, you can just drip some of the color into the bottle. And then you have your spray ready to go. I use colors I know they will blend nice together. In this case, a yellow, a pink and an orange. So they are all warm colors. These colors are all going very well together. But if I for example added a blue or a green, which are cool colors, you would have created mud and you don't want that. So you can recreate this background in any color that you like, but always keep in mind which colors blend together nice and which don't. Otherwise you create mud, but it's your art journal. So if mud is what you're going for, then sure, go for it. So now my sprays are ready, I first add some water over the pages. The colors will blend easier into each other when the pages are wet. Then we can just randomly spray down some color onto the pages. Of course you don't necessarily have to make sprays for this. You can also add the color with a brush. But what I like about sprays is that you have less control of where exactly the color will be. I think this creates a more organic look. What I also really love about sprays is the splatter pattern that you see here. But this background I want it to be more smooth. So I used a lot of water so the colors would blend into each other nicely. That's why in the end you won't see this splatter pattern anymore. But I'm definitely going to do more projects with sprays in the future. And then I'll probably keep the splatter pattern because I really like it. But now I keep adding water and here I move the pages around to help the colors move. So they can blend into each other. the whole page is covered, I'll just leave it aside to dry. And this is how it looks now. It looks very organic and the colors stay nice and vibrant. I want to do some stenciling to add more interest to the page. This is a stencil from AliExpress and I use it with my distress inks. I use colors that are similar to the background. In this case picked raspberry and spiced marmalade. This way I can add some interest without making the background too busy. another stencil. This one is from Art by Marlene and I really love this one because it has so many patterns on it that you can use. I think it's very versatile and perfect for backgrounds. So I just picked some parts of it and used it randomly over the background in the same distress inks as I used for the other stencil. I'm done, it's time to add some white splashes. This is just some white gesso that I diluted with water. So I thought it was a good idea to use this fan brush because it gives you a lot of small splatters at once. 
And well, it did, but it also created a big mess. So I had to clean up. So I thought I was done with the background, but now I decided that I wanted to frame it a bit. So I did that by doing some stamping, but only at the edges of the page. And this time I'm using a black ink, so the edges of the page will be a bit darker than the middle. And so I create some sort of a border all around the page. I don't know the brand of this ink pad, but I think you can use any black ink that you have. It also doesn't really matter what background stamps you use for this. You can basically just use anything that could create some sort of a border. I believe these are just some stamps from AliExpress. I just picked these ones because I like that this kind of circles matched with the circles from the stenciling. So I think that brings it more together. much fun creating this page that I couldn't really stop myself. So here I also brought in some modeling paste to add a little more white and also a little more texture to the background. And again I used this Art by Marlene stencil, but this time I used another part of it. And so I randomly added some texture over the page, although it wasn't completely random because I had to keep in mind where exactly the images were going to be. Because it's a bit difficult to stick the images over the paste. But I tried to keep it as random as possible. For the focal points, I'm using this Katzelkraft stamp set Le Papo Aviateur. I only pick one of them, but I stamp it three times. The paper I'm using is just the page that I teared off my Sakura art journal. And again, I use the black ink I don't know the brand of. This is not the only black ink I have in my stash. I also have black distress ink, but since I'm going to color these images with my Ecoline brush markers, which are water-based, I simply can't use my distress inks for stamping. Distress inks are water-reactive, so they will react with the Ecoline. So you have to use a waterproof ink, such as archival ink, or my brandless mysterious wonder ink I have since I was a child, but works with kinda everything. So here I stamped it a fourth time, because I didn't like the third print, because I was probably pressing too hard. And that made the lines a bit thicker than the other ones. So that one is better. So, as I said before, I'm using my Ecoline brush markers to color the images. I color all three images exactly the same. I start coloring the images where I want them to be the darkest. These inks are water reactive, so after coloring with my brush, I can just pick up a water brush and blend the color out. green color for coloring the clothing of the images. This will help them to stand out against the background. When I would have picked a red or an orange for the clothes, they would disappear more into the background. But now the images would stand out. That's because green contrasts with the colors of the background.
done coloring all images, I just fuzzy cut them. As you can see here, I cut off this little guy's arm. It's just so tiny to cut out. But don't worry, I'll give him his arm back later. When they're all cut out, I use a black marker to color the edges. This way I'll get rid of a white edge and it makes it look as if it's cut out perfectly. The sentiment I actually wanted to go with a stamp from the darkroom door that I really like. It says, just act normal, that's crazy enough, and I think it really suits this image. But unfortunately it was sold out. So I just went through some sentiment stickers I have from Dilutions to find anything else that would fit this page. Then I found a sticker that said, I'm not trouble, I'm just a challenge to handle. And I thought that would fit the image as well. Well, I choose to use that sticker, but I wanted the word trouble to stand out. That's why I'm stamping it here directly on my page. The piece of washi tape that you see helps me to stamp the letters in a straight line. Now I cut the sentiment sticker to smaller pieces and stick them on the page. come off very easy, because I changed my mind over the placement. Now let's take a look where I want the images exactly to be. Then I can stamp the images directly on the page, so that will bring back this little guy's arms. I can glue the colored images down with the matte medium from Ranger. I used this glue because it was on my desk, but another glue will work as well of course. was a bit difficult because it was exactly in the folding place. That's why I used the bone folder to create a fold in the image as well. This way my art journal can still open and close without the image to tear or let go. Now I'm just coloring their little hands with a black pen. Also color in the arms with my white gel pen. I'm darkening up the letters by tracing them with a black pen. This helps them to stand out even more. I'm adding some highlights with my white gel pen. I do this around the black stickers, on the black letters and also some highlights on the images.
I am done with the highlights, I think that the glue is dry, so I can cut out the excess of the images. And here is another part where I can stop myself, and I wanted to frame the page even more. That's why I colored in some parts of the stamps at random with black and white. My camera just stopped filming, but luckily it's almost the end of this project. I just continued the coloring of the stamps and then it's actually done. So I hope you enjoyed it and here are some close-up pictures of the project. If you like this project and want to see more, please check out my Instagram and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, bye!